بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد بن عبد الله الأمين قائد الغر المحجلين وعلى آله وأصحابه وتابعيهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما يخشى الله من عباده العلماء وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أكثروا ذكر هذه من لذات الموت وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الأعمال بالخواتيم محترم بزرگ اور دوستو آج کی اس مختصر تقریر کا مقصد شیخ الحدیث محدث العصر عارف باللہ حضرت اختص مولانا محمد یونس صاحب جون پوری رحمۃ اللہ علیہ نور اللہ مرقدہ و برد مضجاہ کے کچھ حالات کا تذکرہ کرنا ہے اور اس کا مقصد یہی ہے کہ حضرت رحمۃ اللہ علیہ کی زندگی کے حالات کو سن کر ہم بھی عبرت لے ہم بھی وہ اوصاف اور وہ خوبیاں اور وہ اچھی صفات جو حضرت رحمۃ اللہ علیہ میں موجود تھی وہ ہم اپنی زندگی میں اپنائے اس سے ہم عبرت لے شیخ الحدیث حضرت مولانا محمد یونس صاحب جون پوری رحمۃ اللہ علیہ کی ولادت تھرٹین ففٹی فائیو ہجری یعنی نائنٹین تھرٹی سیون میں ہوئی اور جب حضرت رحمۃ اللہ علیہ کی وفات ہوئی ہے تو آپ کی عمر اسلامی اعتبار سے ایٹی تھری ایئرز ہے فورٹین تھرٹی ایٹ ہجری چل رہی ہے ایٹی تھری ایئرز کی آپ کی عمر ہوئی آپ کی ولادت با سعادت قصبہ جون پور جو ہندوستان میں یو پی کا علاقہ ہے بہت بڑا علاقہ ہے آپ تمام حضرات اس سے واقف ہیں یہ جون پور کا علاقہ ہے اور وہ وہاں سے بہت بڑے بڑے علماء اس علاقے سے جو ہیں پہلے آئے ہیں اور آج بھی وہ علاقہ مشہور ہے حضرت کی ولادت جون پور میں ہوئی ہے حضرت رحمۃ اللہ علیہ واز بورن ان دا ایریا آف جون پور وچ از وچ از لوکیٹڈ ان اتر پردیش ان انڈیا ایٹ دا ٹین دا ایج آف فائیو ہیز مدر پاسٹ اوے اینڈ ہیز نانی ہیز مٹرنل گرینڈ مدر ہو واز اے ویری پائس لیڈی شی لکڈ آفٹر ہم شی نرچرڈ ہم شی بوٹ ہم اپ اینڈ ان دا ارلی ایئرز حضرت رحمۃ اللہ علیہ ٹوک ہز ارلی ایجوکیشن فرام مولانا ضیاء الحق فیض آبادی رحمۃ اللہ علیہ اینڈ وین ایور حضرت ووڈ وزٹرز ان دا یو کے ہی ووڈ ریگولرلی مینشن انک ڈوٹ اسٹوریز دیٹ ہی ووڈ ریکلیکٹ فرام ہز اینکاؤنٹرز ود حضرت مولانا ضیاء الحق فیض آبادی رحمۃ اللہ علیہ اینڈ ووڈ آلویز ریمبر ہم آل دو شیخ یونس صاحب رحمۃ اللہ علیہ ڈی ناٹ انڈر ٹیک اینڈ ڈی ناٹ اسٹڈی دا میجر بکس آف حدیث اینڈ دا فائنل بکس ود مولانا فیض ال وید مولانا فید الحق فید آبادی رحمۃ اللہ علیہ مولانا ضیاء الحق فید آبادی رحمۃ اللہ علیہ بٹ یت ہی ووڈ ناٹ فگیٹ ہم اینڈ دین از اے لیسن فار از آل دیٹ واٹ ایور وی ہیو اسٹڈیڈ فرام اینی آف آور ٹیچرز ایون دو دے مائٹ ہیو ٹوٹ از نورانی قاعدہ دے مائٹ ہیو اونلی ٹوٹ از دا دا ارلیئر بکس بٹ ان ریالٹی اٹ از دیٹ فاؤنڈیشن وداؤٹ دیٹ فاؤنڈیشن اے پرسن کین ناٹ بیکم این عالم Without that foundation, a person cannot become a muhaddith. So one should not uh, forsake, one should not forget the contribution made by all of our teachers, including those who may have taught, who may have taught us alif ba, including those who may, have, who may have taught us how to recite the Qur'an. So Hazrat Shaykh Yunus Sahib Rahmatullahi Alayhi would always, in every safar of his, in every journey and trip of his, would remember and make mention of Mawlana Ziyawul Haq, Fayda Badi Rahmatullahi Alayhi, and would always express his gratitude and shukr to him. So, Hazrat Rahmatullahi Alayhi studied the earlier books, the Ibtidai books of Arbi Awwal, Arbi Dawm and so on with Mawlana Ziyawul Haq Rahmatullahi Alayhi and other teachers in the Qasba of Janpur. Thereafter, he travelled to Saharanpur, Madahir Ulum Saharanpur and the final three years of his studies, he undertook in Saharanpur and in Saharanpur he studied under great ulama like Shaykh Al-Hadith, Mawlana Muhammad Zakariya Sahib, Nawar Allahu Marqadahu, the likes of Hazrat Mawlana Asadullah Sahib, who is the senior disciple of Hakim al-Ummat, Mawlana Ashraf Ali Thanwi Rahmatullahi Alayhi, Shaykh Yunus Sahib Rahmatullahi Alayhi was very close to him. And Mawlana Asadullah Sahib Rahmatullahi Alayhi in those days 
would say to Shaykh Yunus through his foresight that oh Yunus a time will come when what you say will be hujjat what you say will be used as evidence in other words ulama from all over the world will rely on your research a time will come when ulama and scholars and students from all over the world will use your research use your view as evidence as hujjah and that will be well accepted all over the world and subhanallah we saw this over the past many years ulama from all over the world from many many different countries from various schools of thought would do ruju and refer themselves to Shaykh Yunus Rahmatullahi Alayhi so Shaykh Rahmatullahi Alayhi undertook his studies and he graduated in 1380 Hijri and within a year or so he was appointed as Ustad in Madahir Ulum Saharanpur and in a very short period of time he was allocated books of hadith to teach during the first few years of his uh, of him becoming a teacher at Madahir Ulum, he was given the opportunity to teach Sahih Muslim and many many other books of hadith and fiqh and other books. And it was a few years later in 1388 Hijri that Shaykh Al Hadith Mawlana Muhammad Zakariya Sahib Nawarallahu Marqadahu, who at the time to- was lecturing Sahih Al Bukhari, he was the Shaykh Al Hadith of Madahir Ulum Saharanpur, had taught Bukhari for many years. Due to illness, he decided that he was no longer going to teach Sahih Al Bukhari. So at the time he decided to uh, transfer this position and, and give this duty to Shaykh Yunus Rahmatullahi Ali. And Shaykh at the time was very very young, maybe in his uh, uh, early 30s, uh, 32, 33 at the time. And many of his teachers were also alive at the time. And he, he had only been teaching for 7 or 8 years. Uh, but despite this, Azar Shaykh Mawana Zakariya Sahib Rahmatullahi Ali saw within Shaykh Yunus Sahib Rahmatullahi Ali a deep passion and desire uh, and a deep insight into the knowledge of hadith and into the science of hadith which Shaykh had really acquired a specialism in. So Hazrat Shaykh Rahmatullahi Alayhi decided to make Shaykh Yunus Sahib Rahmatullahi Alayhi the Shaykh al-Hadith. So from 1388 Hijri all the way to 1438, 1437-38 Hijri Shaykh Yunus Sahib Rahmatullahi Alayhi taught Sahih al-Bukhari in Madahi Ulum Saharanpur, from beginning to end, a collection of seven to eight thousand hadith, in addition to other books of hadith that Shaykh Yunus Alayhi would also teach for 49 years. Shaykh Yunus Alayhi taught 49 classes of Dora'i hadith in, in Madarsa Madahi Ulum Saharanpur. A unique honor. There are not many ulama who have this honor uh, and privilege of teaching Sahih al Bukhari A to Z for 49 years continuously consecutively and apart from this Shaykh Yunus taught Sahih al-Bukhari in Haramain and in many other places many a times so Shaykh Rahmatullahi Alayhi must have uh, taught Sahih al-Bukhari at least 60 times if not more and Shaykh had a very very uh, close connection to Sahih al-Bukhari and to Imam Bukhari Rahmatullahi Alayhi himself Shaykh would say regularly that give sadaqa on behalf of Imam Bukhari Rahmatullahi Alayhi Shaykh would say regularly that Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi is a mu'jiza and a miracle of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi, hudur akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ka mu'jiza hai. And this mu'jiza was such that it manifested 200-250 years after the demise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, uh, Shaykh Yunus sahib rahmatullahi alayhi had a very uh, close connection to Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi and to the hadiths of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam when it came to the hadith and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam there was no compromise whatsoever we heard many times Shaykh and we saw Shaykh many times we heard him many times he would see anyone who was trimming his beard or who has not lengthened his beard or who does not have the beard Shaykh would rebuke him and for Shaykh the debate whether the beard is sunnah or wajib or mustahab, that was not entertained. The mere fact that it is a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that was enough. This morning, I had a phone call from one of my colleagues in Leicester. They mentioned to me that once in the 80s, they were doing tawaf with Shaykh. And a person placed, was placing his hand on the hatim. And Shaykh said to him that, لا يجوز وضع الأيدي على الحطيم أثناء الطواف. That it is not permissible to place your hands on the hatim during tawaf. So the person said to him, Ad-deen yusrun. That deen is easy, is flexible, doesn't matter. You know, it's flexible. So Shaykh said immediately, Al-yusru ma thabata an Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
that easiness and yusr is what is thabit from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Shaykh had a very very deep love and, and connection and attachment to the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Shaykh would regularly say that you can pray long long wadaif, long long wazifas. But if you read the dua that is mentioned in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which might be very very short, like Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, or any other dua which might be very very short, the long wazifa cannot match the nur and the reward uh, that is in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Shaykh every year, rahmatullahi alayhi, would travel for the past uh, many many years, Shaykh performed at least 40 hajj during his life. And every uh, every occasion when he would perform Hajj, and I was also honored, alhamdulillah, to participate in 2002 with Sheikh Rahmatullahi Ali during Hajj. But even in recent years, when Sheikh Yunus Sahib Rahmatullahi Ali was extremely ill, but despite this, so much love of the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that every Sunnah that is narrated from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during Hajj, he would try to emulate and try to follow. Most of us, when we go for Hajj on the 12th of Dhul Hijjah, after doing Rami and the stoning of the devil for three days, we return to Makkah al Mukarramah. But it is a Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to stay in Mina also on the thirteenth of Dhul Hijjah. Shaykh Rahmatullahi alayhi in every Hajj of his would ensure that he resides in Mina on the thirteenth of Dhul Hijjah as well. Whilst ninety percent, ninety-five percent of people they return on the twelfth of Dhul Hijjah to Makkah. In fact, on one occasion, the thirteenth of Dhul Hijjah coincided with a Friday. It was Yawm al Jumu'ah. And Sheikh said that even though it is Friday, I will miss the Jumu'ah Salah of Masjid Al-Haram and I will stay in Mina because it is a Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to stay in Mina. When we talk about the Ramyul Jimar, the stoning of the devil, we all know that there are hundreds and thousands and millions of people and it is extremely difficult. Many, many people become shaheed and they become martyred in the process of trying to do Ramyul Jimar, especially in the early morning, in the early hours of Yawm al-Nahar of 10th of Dhul Hijjah. Everyone wants to rush to tawaf ziyarat and so on. So there are thousands of people. But Shaykh Rahmatullahi Ali would ensure to perform the Rami, the stoning of the devil. Most of us when we go, we say that we will go after Asr. When the crowd is less and when the weather has cooled down. But Shaykh Rahmatullahi Ali would ensure to perform Rami not only in the Sunnat and Masnoon time. Not only in the Sunnat and Masnoon time, but also in the Sunnah position, where, where Makkah al Mukarramah, in terms of where it is Sunnah for a person to do Rami from, it is Jais to, 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 to do the stoning from any side, but there is also a Sunnah position where Makkah is, a, is on one side and the, and the Jimar and the pillar is on one side. This is also a Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, not only following the Sunnah time, but also the Sunnah position. And a couple of years ago, Sheikh fell extremely ill. And people said to him that, Sheikh, uh, it is very, very difficult. You are extremely ill. We have to take you on the, on the wheelchair. It will be impossible to perform Rami at the Masnoon time. There are lots of people. So Sheikh replied that, take me. Take me now. Even if I have to die, I will die. But I will not forsake the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I rather die whilst fulfilling the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam fulfilling this obligation in the sunnah time it was jais for him to perform rami at another time but he said that i will rather die whilst fulfilling the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam i don't want to uh, continue to live whilst missing the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this is and all other in terms of yawm arafah the muzdalifa the staying the night in muzdalifa all the all the sunnah aspects of hajj Sheikh would try to emulate even though he was extremely weak and even though he was extremely ill. Sheikh had an ajeeb, amazing connection to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he would visit us every year in the UK. He would always say, whenever there would be a dawat, whenever there would be uh, 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 food at in Darul Ulum Blackburn or elsewhere at anyone's house, he would always remind us, he would always say that, but you are feeding us, you are feeding the guests, do this not to show off. Do this not for anyone else's sake. Do this with the intention of ittiba'i sunnah. Do this with the intention that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam showed hospitality to his guests. We are showing hospitality to our guests because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam did so. So much attachment, 
so much connection to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Even in minute, minute things, my father was mentioning. Uh, although we have not heard this from Sheikh Rahmatullahi alayhi, my father mentioned that on this trip, I noted very carefully that Sheikh Rahmatullahi alayhi, when he uh, folds his spectacles, then he folds the left spindle first and then the right, and then when he opens it, enabling him to open. Uh, to unfold his spectacles with the right side first and then the left similar to how we wear our shoes we wear it with the right and then we take out from the left so so much although we did not hear this from Sheikh Rahmatullah himself but this was an observation that my father made so so much love and connection to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam even in minute minute details and the love and attachment to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is beyond description i once i heard sheikh say that just in search for one hadith and not one hadith but just one uh, alfaz one loves one particular word within a narration of a hadith i read the musnad of imam ahmad ibn hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi the musnad of imam ahmad ibn hanbal is in six volumes has 30000 hadiths sahih al bukhari has approximately 7 to 8000 hadiths the Musnad of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi, which is in order of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, has approximately 30,000 hadiths. Shaykh says that just in search for one narration, and not just one narration, but one particular uh, siyaq and one particular, the way in which one narration is narrated in search of one word. I read the Musnad of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi, four times from beginning to end. 30,000 hadiths times by four, 120,000 hadiths just in search for one love, one word that came out from the blessed tongue of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. One day before Shaykh passed away, subhanallah, his khadim was mentioning to someone that Shaykh had musnad of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi one day before he passed away open and Shaykh was writing some notes on the musnad, some hawashi, some notes on the musnad. So much love of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So much love of the, the of the sunnats of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And there are so many more examples that can be given when Shaykh Rahmatullah alayhi would travel in Madinatul Munawwara. So much love of Madinatul Munawwara, the blessed city of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that he would not he would prefer not to use the AC, the air condition. And he would say that I rather take in the blessed air of, of Madinatul Munawwara. And so much love of the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Shaykh had read the hadith that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam visited the gardens of Abu Talha al Ansari radiallahu an, and he he ate from the dates. He he consumed the dates and the kajur. So Shaykh would visit the orchard, the trees of Madinatul Munawwara, uh, just to fulfill the Sunnah. Even when he was uh, weak and elderly, he would travel in the car and he would uh, visit a garden in Medina to Munawwara and consume the dates of Medina. And thereafter he would say that do not throw these seeds away in the dustbin. Out of respect, he would advise his students to bury the seeds. Not throw them away in the dustbin like the other items, normal items are thrown away. This is how much respect he had for the hadiths of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And Shaykh's entire life, there are so many aspects of Shaykh's life that can be spoken about. Shaykh's advices, Shaykh's poverty. The other day when I made the announcement, I mentioned to you one or two examples about Shaykh's selflessness, Shaykh's zuhd and piety. Allahu Akbar. Shaykh, when he, in his early life, Shaykh's poverty was such, Shaykh's faqr was such, one of his students mentioned to me that when Shaykh was in his early years of teaching, Although he was teaching the books of hadith, he was a senior ustad in Madahir Ulum Saharanpur. He only had one ball. He only had one utensil. With this utensil, this utensil was his utensil, his burton, his plate for his food. This utensil was his glass for, to drink water. This utensil was used for cooking. This utensil was used to wash his clothes. This utensil was everything. He had nothing else. So much so I have seen with my own eyes, Shaykh Rahmatullahi Ali did not have money to purchase paper. So he would write his Arabic notes on postcards, behind envelopes. And even today they exist. I have some copies of this, small postcards, small notes, 
small pieces of newspaper because he could not afford paper. Allahu Akbar. Such a great muhaddith can, does not even have the money to afford paper. Could not afford medicine. My respected father, Mufti Shabir Sahib, mentions that my father would cook food for him. For the three years that he stayed in the khidmat of Shaykh Rahmatullahi Alayhi, he would cook food for him every day. And Shaykh would say to him that this pigeon, some, sometimes someone would donate a pigeon, someone would gift a pigeon. And Shaykh Rahmatullahi Alayhi would say to my father that last this pigeon, use this pigeon for a few days. Don't just cook it in one day. One pigeon, but make it last for a few days. This is the zuhd and the fakr that Shaykh Rahmatullahi Alayhi endured. But even when we look at Shaykh Rahmatullahi Alayhi, Shaykh Yunus Sahib Rahmatullahi Alayhi's latter life, he was totally detached from the world. Totally detached. Whatever gifts that he would get, he would donate in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on his most recent visit, as I've mentioned on a few occasions, 70,000 pounds gifts he received, hadaya from reunion from UK, from Saudi Arabia. He did not take a single penny with him to India. Every single penny. Imagine, this is an alim from India who is coming to the UK, to Saudi Arabia, receiving 70,000 pounds hadaya. It's not a small amount. And in the Hajj, if he received another 30, 40,000 pounds. So 100,000 pounds, every single penny donated in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He left this world, he never left anything. He left this world, he never left anything. Everything was given in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only this, one of the examples that comes to mind, once Sheikh Yunus Sahib came here a few years ago, and uh, someone mentioned to him that one of his students in Blackburn, one of his students in Blackburn, he is in debt. Sheikh Yunus Sahib, rahmatullahi alayhi, when all the gifts were collected, approximately 1,000 pounds, he said that, ye unko de do. An alim from India, giving all the gifts that he receives in the UK to another alim, a student of his in Blackburn in the UK. Can any such example be found? Allahu Akbar. This is, these are, this was how Sheikh Yunus Sahib, rahmatullahi alayhi, lived throughout his life, totally detached from the world. Zahid, he was a true Zahid. And then why would it not be that when he, rahmatullahi alayhi, he passes away, according to some estimates, one million people. According to other estimates, 450,000 people participate in his Salatul Janazah. Although the Janazah was only announced at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and the Janazah Salah was performed at 5.30, 6 o'clock, many, many thousands of people from Gujarat, from other parts of India were unable to participate in Salatul Janazah. Many people from the UK were unable to participate in Salatul Janazah. Yet you have half a million to one million people participating in Salatul Janazah. And Shaykh Rahmatullahi Ali's personality, as we all know, was not such that uh, he was a very sociable person in the sense that he would regularly go out and give speeches and hundreds and thousands of people would participate in his bayans and so on. He was not of that personality. His, his personality was connected to the hadiths and students. But yet his appeal, and this is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi has mentioned that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes someone, he tells Jibreel Amin that, oh Jibreel, like him. Announcement is made in the heavens that, oh people of the heaven, like this person for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes him. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thumma qabul fi ahli al-ard. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places acceptance for him amongst the inhabitants, amongst the inhabitants of the earth. Allahu Akbar. So many people performing Salatul Janazah, people from all over the world sharing their condolences uh, with regards to Shaykh Yunus Sahib Rahmatullahi Alayhi's demise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give us the tawfiq to ponder upon some of the qualities, the ittiba'i sunnat, the following of the sunnah, the zuhd, the selflessness, the taqwa and the piety and give us the tawfiq to ponder upon this.